Matchmaker.fm connects podcasters and guests. Welcome to Matched, the show where we talk to some of the most incredible guests available for an interview right now. I'm your host, James Mulvaney, founder of Matchmaker.fm, and this is Matched. Hi, my name is Matt Mills, and you can find me on Matchmaker FM. Thanks for joining us today on Matched. Matt, how's it going? It's going great, James. How are you? Yeah, I'm really well. I'm really well. So we always start off with a couple of different icebreaker questions. Mm -hmm. So if a zombie apocalypse is coming, who are (laughs) three people that you want on your team? (laughs) Three people that I want on my team. Well, I think I, I have to pick my wife. Uh, so that would be one um, just to keep me company. Uh, and so I think she would be one. Uh, she'd probably be very mad at me if I didn't pick her. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Another one, you know, it's a, not a person, but I'd pick our dog. Uh, I think n- number one uh, she could help us to scrounge for for some food, maybe fight off some of the zombies. Uh, yeah, and then she'd also be able to keep us company as well. Um, and then I think if the other if the zombie apocalypse, let's see, I'd probably want someone like the Rock who could just be a protector. Uh, so somebody who you know could just take leadership, tell us where to go, do all the fighting for us. So I'd probably say those three people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, they're good answers. I mean, you know, you want it to be a family affair, I guess, you know, if, uh, right. if you're going to have to run for like from zombies. Okay, cool. And if you could learn uh, any skill in the world, like really quickly, what would it be? Boy, these are great questions. Uh, a skill really quickly. Um, yeah. You know, I think so. I, I I enjoy cooking. I do a lot of cooking, but I'd love to know how to uh, just basically be a gourmet chef. Uh, I, number one, that would make you really, really popular. Uh, yeah. You'd have a lot of friends, but not anything where I'm opening a restaurant, but just something where I could entertain and show off some of my skills. Uh, so I think if there's any skill I could learn really, really quickly, it's how to pretty much cook anything at a very, very high level. That's a great answer. I, I, do you know what? I kind of feel like that. I've, I've really got into cooking over the last few years. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, when I was back at college and university, I didn't really cook. I cooked because I had to. Right. Whereas now I really enjoy cooking, and I, I completely agree. I think it'd be great to be able to take it to that next level. Yeah. I just want to be able to open up, be one of those people that opens up the cabinet, opens up the fridge, and yeah. can look and see what's in, in there and just whip together a really fantastic meal for either myself or for whoever I'm with. Cool. Yeah. Good answers. Right. So let's dive into it. Um, firstly, please, can you introduce yourself and tell us about your podcast? Of course. Yeah. So I, my name is Matt Mills. I live in Los Angeles, California. I, uh, and I, my podcast is called run to thrive and what run to thrive is, is it's a podcast for runners and leaders and, and people who use running or want to use running or movement as a way to fuel their success. So hmm. it's a mix of an interview show, also a show where you can get some really great insights feedback tips uh, on how to be a better leader in your life and to use running as a way to, to be able to fuel your own leadership and your own success. Awesome. Do you think that ties in nicely? Because lots of people obviously listen to podcasts now whilst they're running, which I, That's right. I guess maybe 10 years ago, they probably didn't. It was more like, let's get the music on and go. Yep. Back in the 90s, you'd have your Walkman or whatever. But like nowadays, I'd say like most people I speak to who run will listen to podcasts while they're running. Yeah, you know, it's it's that moment, and I do as well. It's that mm. time of day. I feel like there's right now, uh, I'm someone who absorbs a lot of information, uh, mm. and it feels like there's not enough time in the day to do that. I have a stack of books. I have all these other things that I want to do, and so my run is actually a time where I can be a productive in a way, <laughs> and I can mm. listen to new insights, uh, be entertained. And so now I actually I find myself listening to podcasts while I run, more than I am listening to music. And I think you're right. A lot of people are doing the same. Mm, I always notice as well, like if I'm, I'm not a big runner, but I do go to the gym. And Mm -hmm. when I'm like on one of the machines, 
I would like sometimes get the best ideas ever, you know, just because yeah. I think it's just like the endorphins are going, aren't they? And and I think your brain is kind of like in a sort of heightened, sort of almost like stimulated state that kind of sometimes when you just sat around, it's not, you know? So yeah. I think exercise and, and sort of being creative, coming up with ideas and sort of problem solving can really go hand in hand, which is, is a really interesting theme. Right. Um, well, you know, also, so, so what, to start off with, you know, why did you decide to start a podcast? What was the, the journey that led you to do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, in my professional life, I'm a life and leadership coach. I, mm. And so I coach leaders and, and people who uh, want to be better in their careers, um, who want to reduce their stress, who basically want to become the best version of themselves. Mm. Uh, and so I was had that as, as part of my business that I've had for a number of years. And I was really looking for a way to help get my message out. And mm-hmm. I, I've also been a lifelong runner myself. So one day I was on a run and I thought I was training. I started training for my, my next marathon. And I thought, you know what? The way that I train for a marathon, the way that I have this success in this marathon um, is, is really applies to the coaching that I do. And mm-hmm. so I, I've never been one who's been so inclined with social media and, and be able to get my, my message out consistently. And so I, I realized that there was this strong connection between success, leadership, and then also running and training. Uh, yeah. And then I also realized that I had a lot of friends who did that as well. A lot of people, whether they were serious runners, casual runners, um, or people who I looked up to, admired, who were successful, mm-hmm. who also had some sort of running or exercise or uh, other practice. And so I started the podcast as a way to, number one, get my message out, uh, really talk about this connection between personal leadership, personal success, and my passion for running. And then at mm-hmm. the same time, really be able to explore other people, other leaders, uh, and other individuals who really they were successful because they were able to rely on either their running or running came into their life at a key moment where it helps change who they were in a positive way. And so I was really excited to explore that idea. And that's why I decided to start Run to Thrive. Awesome. And you obviously signed up to Matchmaker. Why? Mm-hmm. What led you to, to join Matchmaker? Yeah, so I was looking for a way to, number one, be connected to this podcasting community. So mm. uh, yeah. ever since I started the podcast, I've really seen that it, it, it can be a very robust community of people, not only mm. of other people who have podcasts, but other people who have these strong personal messages that they want to get out. Uh, and so I got connected with, with Matchmaker uh, and through where I hosted my, uh, hosted my podcast. And mm-hmm. I was just so excited to have an opportunity uh, to really to be able to connect with people. And so it was a great platform for me to uh, get new guests, find people around the world that I may not have been able to be get in touch with otherwise, and people who were really connected with the message that I was getting out there and wanted to share theirs and share their story. Uh, and so that's that's really why I was excited to to join Matchmaker. Okay, great. And and also um as a result, uh, I understand you've you've been a guest on other people's podcasts as well. So right. would you mind if telling us a little bit about that and and also again, you know, as as have you found that a useful tool as a way to kind of amplify your message and and also, you know, make more folks aware of your podcast. That's right. Yeah, not just my podcast, but just my business, my message, what I do in general. I'm mm-hmm. I thought one of the best benefits that I've seen from being part of Matchmaker is exactly that. I've had people reach out and say, hey, I have a podcast that talks about uh, this particular topic, and I think you'd be a really good fit for it. And I love having those conversations. Uh, It's something that I I didn't expect that I would be doing as much of. Uh, I, I love seeing people's different approaches to uh, a particular aspect, you know, podcasting, it can be, 
in a great way can be very niche where you can mm. really find a very specific corner and talk about it in so many different ways. And so I've really loved the opportunity to be able to share my message, share my story, and connect it with the particular audience of, of that podcast that, that, that I'm a guest on. And what advice would you give to someone who's perhaps thinking about going into podcasting, either starting their own podcast or, or going into podcast as a guest? Yeah, I think... Number one, as a guest, it's a great opportunity for you to be able to share your expertise, share mm -hmm. your interests, and then be able to share your message and point of view on the world, really. Uh, and then for someone who's eager to start a podcast, I would say, you know, for me, it took a while. I actually recorded a lot of interviews, and it took me months before I was <laughs> able to launch it. And, you know, I was worried about keeping consistent and finding guests and really okay. not knowing what I would continue to talk about on a regular basis. And since I've launched, a lot of those fears have, have gone away. And it's just been such an exciting journey for me. <laughs> and so what I would say is for anyone who really does have that message or does have something that they want to share, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's your own message that you want to get out or whether it's connecting with other people, and other experts and other professionals that you want to interview and you're curious about, just get started. Because once you yeah. get started, that's the hardest part. But then once you're not, pun intended, I guess, off and running, <laughs> it's really, it can be a really fun and exciting journey. Do you think, uh, you know, you mentioned there, you, you obviously recorded quite a few episodes before then finally kind of taking the plunge and actually launching. Mm -hmm. Would you? Is that something you'd recommend that people do, or you know, is that a good a good strategy to have that kind of initial buffer of of content that's ready to go? Because obviously, you know, one of the things that we see a lot of the time is people will think, "Oh, I'm going to start a podcast." They'll they'll record like I think it's like the the difficult eight episodes. You know, yeah. a lot of podcasts never get eight past eight episodes. So, would you say if you can, if you, you know, is it a good idea that someone actually records eight episodes? And then at least you kind of know that you've got that initial run to, to work with. Yeah, I do. You know, I'm so grateful that I approached it that way uh, yeah. because there are some weeks where life happens where maybe I planned a solo episode sure. or maybe I am a little bit backlogged on some interviews. And so now I have this library of these interviews that I can get out where I don't feel as pressured. And the other thing too is I've realized that my message has changed and my approach and the way that I cater to my audience and what it is that they want to listen to. It does change, mm. but at the same time, I'm really grateful that I have some banked episodes so that if there's something in particular, uh, you know, I've had some guests that I've recorded it six months ago and in this particular moment for me, I am maybe I'm talking about one particular type of topic and I yeah. shared that information with that guest. Now I have it ready to go so I can launch it. It takes the pressure off of me to really have to create that new content every single week. And I think that that's important, especially for when you're getting started, because mm. you do need to have the consistency of recording, editing putting the show description. And for me, it took a few weeks to get into that flow. So knowing that I already had contents that gave me that step up uh, a few steps ahead, it was just, it was so easy for me to be able to keep the momentum going. And so I got past the eight and that was a concern of mine. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm yeah. thinking, I can't wait to record episode number 50 or number 100, <laughs> which won't be for yeah. another year from now. Matt, thank you very much for your time today. If people want to listen into your podcast or reach out to you, how can they find out more? How can they get in touch? Yeah, so you can find my podcast on any major platform, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of those. Um, and it's called Run to Thrive. So uh, just as it said, Run to Thrive. Uh, and you can find me at coachingontherun.com, uh, which is where... Uh, my podcast lives and then also you can find out more about me, my coaching and um, how I bring this message to life through, through my work. Awesome. Thank you very much, Matt. Great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.
there is an easier way to get booked onto more podcasts as a guest. Join matchmaker.fm for free today and start making connections with podcasters who are looking for guests just like you.